2020 has been really quite a year with obviously many changes for everybody and a whole new set of environments and situations for us all to deal with. In the world of mobile network operators, an awful lot has continued and been necessitated to be developed in order to not only deploy 5G much more widely across the country, but also to support this new environment. I am currently on a hill in North Belfast where one of the key developments is existing in my background here. So the mast behind me is one of the flagship EE3 Max Config sites, which has the ability for a high capacity 5G and 4G configuration to be deployed for operators EE and 3. And in fact, this is a 3 gigabit capable 100 megahertz 5G site, which serves not only this hill and quite often cows, but also the people of North Belfast and some of the prevailing rural areas. Three have been incredibly busy during the course of this year with an unprecedented rollout of not only 5G using macro towers like this, but also a whole new range of street poles as well, which they are newly planning, building and constructing across the country. And on last tracking, they had well over 1,000 applications submitted to local authorities with over 600 of them approved and constantly once approved they're being rolled out with incredible pace in order to provide 5G and improve 4G for the new wave of data expansion. Now unfortunately there are not any phase 8 poles available for me to film on location in Belfast but fortunately Dorico has managed to film at some in the Manchester area so I will post that out when the video is finished but nonetheless these 15 to 20 meter poles of wonder are really key to 3's ability to lead for 5G in future because they bring 5G and improve 4G much closer to where consumers live and work and because they're relatively short it means that they do not end up massively over serving or having massive cell edges which uh, dampen the performance for everyone. In addition the phase 8 have a massive MIMO deployment and full 40 4G and are currently being deployed primarily with Ericsson but there are a few that are Huawei from before Ericsson was uh, taking over as 3's modernization vendor. 3's street pole based 5G densification doesn't finish with just the phase 8 street poles, they're also an exceedingly keen participant in the bilateral phase 7 rollout program where they together with EE deploy shared structures capable of flagship 4G and 5G. The phase 7 poles are quad stack such that each operator can deploy their own 5G massive MIMO and high end 4G capability. In London, 3's UK broadband genius comes to the fore once again. The acquisition of UK broadband didn't just grant 3 access to a huge amount of C band spectrum which has been key to their 5G speed leadership. It also provided a collection of well-located sites. Initially, these provided 5G and 4G just for the Relish customers, but they have since been reparented such that all three customers can take advantage of them, thereby identifying 3's overall grid and enabling much better performance in those areas for all. All of these deployment approaches enabled 3 to exceed 1,000 live 5G sites this year. A truly astounding number and one they should be very proud about. In addition, Ookla crowned 3 the fastest 5G operator in the UK as well. 
Three's upgrade works haven't just been limited to these fancy 5G structures with mega capable 4G. They have also been hard at work carrying out routine 4G capacity upgrades with their 4G site upgrade count now sitting at about 4,000. Again, quite a substantial number of capacity upgrades. And underpinning all of this has been backhaul improvement works with some new contracts, as well as the addition of more data centers, which will help improve latency, um, bringing the data center power closer to customers. Three also enabled Vaulty nationally as opposed to before where it is only available in certain clusters generally or on the 800 megahertz. I'm sorry but it was just too cold and wet for me to continue filming out there so I'm back in my living room to talk about the final 3UK matter of this 2020 roundup video. Their deployment of coverage onto the new Jubilee line London Underground solution. Now, many of you will know that the London Underground has not historically had cellular service at all, with the only communication being possible through a Wi-Fi service at stations. But on the Jubilee line, this changed in 2020 with a multi-operator solution deployed in the Jubilee line tunnel and stations and three took part in this and has a potent solution deployed with very nice performance this being a screenshot from one of the stations now i will do a separate video about the underground solution in due course um, but until then on to the ending of the video so 2020 has been quite the year for three with much rollout and a lot in the way of developments. But what for 2021? Now there's increasingly the sentiment that 2021 will be the year that three win. And this is actually not that uncompelling. After all, three have completed much of the supporting groundwork already and have an existing extremely compelling spectrum holding in the 3.x gigahertz range, which means there's not all that much pressure to bid, especially in that range, in the upcoming Spectrum auction. The devil, in my mind, will be in the delivery. After all, three's competitors are not going to be standing still in 2021 either. But if they can nail the delivery and mobilise Ericsson to the peak advantage, then I am sure they are on to an exceedingly capable winner. P.S. Can we please have some clusters, pretty please? 2100 MHz refarm clusters and Ericsson deployment clusters. That would be brilliant. Thanks.